Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with an algebraic expression. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. So we're given that x over y plus z plus y over z plus x plus z over x plus y is equal to 1, and we're supposed to evaluate x squared over y plus z plus y squared over z plus x plus z squared over x plus y. Now, normally this is kind of like a proof problem where they tell you what the answer is and they say that, show that this is equal to that, but I kind of removed that uh, answer from there uh, and we're just going to evaluate it, okay? It's pretty much the same thing. So what's the idea? So notice that the original expression is equal to one and obviously you can find some numbers that satisfy this, right? X, Y, Z, possibly. Oh, so there's one way to go about it. Like you can plug in some numbers because whatever numbers you use, it's going to work, right? I mean, as long as they work, it wouldn't matter the, because the expression that they're asking for or I'm asking for is uh, constant. So it has a constant answer. So that's one way to go about it. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'd like to manipulate this algebraically. Okay. So how do we manipulate it? Well, notice that mm, these two expressions have the same denominators. The only thing that differs is the numerator. So instead of x, we have x squared. So should we just go ahead and uh, take that expression and square it? Nope, that's not a good idea because it's going to bring the denominator squared, which is something we don't want. So instead of that, I'm going to use a different strategy and that's going to look like this. I'm going to take this expression and multiply it by First of all, let me tell you this. Here's, here's the plan to solve this problem. If, if you look at x over y plus z and x squared over y plus z, hmm, the only thing that, that was done here is basically multiply the first expression by x, right? So that tells you something about the solution method. If you go ahead and multiply by x, you'll get the first part. But then you'll get, you'll get some extra terms, which we'll handle later. So here's the idea then. We're going to multiply the first expression by x and then by y, and then by z. And then we'll put it all together. What is that supposed to mean? It means that we're going to multiply the first expression by x plus y plus z, because if you go ahead and distribute that, you're going to get something awesome. And what is that going to look like? Well, it's going to look real nice. You'll see in a little bit. But the idea is basically, when you distribute the x, the first term is going to give you what you want. When you distribute the y, the second term is going to give you what you want. When you distribute the z, the third one is going to give you what you want. Does that make sense? So we're going to put it all together. But what is this equal to? Since we're multiplying both sides by x plus y plus z, 1 times x plus y plus z is going to equal x plus y plus z. All right? Awesome. So we have an identity. Of course, uh, this needs to be maybe uh, mentioned before that y plus z cannot be zero, z plus x cannot be zero, x plus y cannot be zero. So they, these expressions should not be undefined. Okay. All right, cool. And x plus y plus z probably shouldn't be zero either, right? Okay, something like this. So there are some restrictions, obviously. So if you distribute, what are you going to get? Well, if you distribute the x, you should be getting x squared over y plus z. That's basically what I want in the first place. And then, of course, you have to distribute x all the way through. So that's going to look like xy over z plus x, right? And then when you multiply uh, x by this expression with the z, you're going to get xz over x plus y. So these are like extra terms, but we'll handle those as well. Don't worry about it. Okay. Plus, now I'm done with the x. Let's distribute the y. If you distribute the y over this, you're going to get xy over y plus z kind of keeping up with the alphabetical order. Multiply the y, you're going to get y squared over z plus x, which is, again, something that we're looking for. Plus, when you multiply by z, yz over x plus y. Great. So this is my expression. And then one more time, we're going to do this. And then the whole thing, we're going to simplify. And as you know, this whole thing is going to equal x plus y plus z. It's not going to fit on the screen, at least this row, but uh, we'll handle that later. So when you distribute the z, you're going to be getting xz over y plus z, and then yz over z plus x, and finally, z squared over x plus y. Again, this is something that we're looking for. So notice that these are the terms 
that we are looking for. x squared over y plus z, y squared over z plus x, and z squared over x plus y. So that's the sum we're looking for. But we got some extra terms, that's perfectly fine. That's fine. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put these together. I'd like to have them together. So it looks like this, x squared over y plus z, plus y squared over z plus x, because that's what I'm trying to solve for, so I'd like to put it together, z squared over x plus y. So this is the expression I'm looking for, and then plus. Now, we gotta be smart here. How do we put these together? Not just randomly, and also don't make a common denominator, because it's just gonna complicate things. You don't wanna make a common denominator here. What you'd like to do, though, is, to look for two terms with the same denominator, so that without making a common denominator, you can combine them. For example, this one is has z plus x. Is there another term with z plus x? Absolutely, and it's this one. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put those together. Let's do that and then see what happens. xy over z plus x, and then I'll be getting yz, right, over z plus x. Nice, so I've taken care of those two terms. And then go ahead and take this one, and it has x plus y at the bottom. So we're looking for another term that has x plus y at the bottom, which is that one. So now we can put these together. And now you'll see in the next step why this is important and why this is meaningful. Plus yz over x plus y, and that's gonna give us another thing to combine. And finally, finally, we have two terms left, and notice that they both have the same denominator, right? They both have the same denominator, so I can just put them together. That makes sense, right? xy over y plus z, and xz over y plus z. And of course, this whole thing is equal to x plus y plus z, but we're gonna write that at the end because we don't have room, okay? Cool. So, what am I gonna do next? Well, this is the part that I'm looking for, so I'm just gonna keep it together, and then everything else I'll try to simplify. Well, we said that we are looking for terms with the same denominator, so what is so significant about it, about it is that now these terms can be combined meaningfully. And not just meaningfully, but very meaningfully. Okay, so what I'm looking for, if you want, you can call that a t or something. Let's call that t, the sum that I'm looking for, t, okay? Plus, now when you put these guys together, you're gonna get xy plus yz, okay, over z plus x. Again, I'm just gonna add those numerators first, and then in the next step, I'm going to simplify, okay? I wanna break it down so that it's more understandable and not too complicated. Okay, cool. Now what I did was, after grouping the terms, of course, I got my, I got my sum first, and then everything else was uh, placed in groups of two with the uh, same denominators. So I have the z plus x, the x plus y's and the y plus z's, okay? Make sense? Now, and then I added their numerators, of course, because if you have two fractions with the same denominator, then you can just add the numerators to add the fractions. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, this t is what I'm looking for, my total, y, my sum, whatever. And then uh, everything else needs to be simplified. And don't forget, this is equal to x plus y plus z. Maybe I can just write that here, jot it down, okay? Cool. Now, what am I gonna do with these terms? Well, look at the numerators, the first one. xy plus yz, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that there's a common factor. Interesting. Okay, so we can factor it, great. So let's do it. If you take out a y, you'll get x plus z, nice. And then that'll be divided by z plus x, cool. And then the second one, has z as a common factor, so I can pull out z, and then I'll have x plus y divided by x plus y. Does that look familiar? Hopefully it does. Plus, this one has x in the numerator, common factor. If you pull that out, you'll get y plus z, and divided by y plus c. And the whole thing is equal to x plus y plus z. Finally, we can write it, right? Okay, now, remember, we're looking for t. And this expression can be simplified. Remember at the beginning we said that there are some requirements, x plus y, x plus z, y plus z, are not equal to zero. Therefore, I can simplify this fraction. How can I simplify it? Well, you can just cross cancel, right? 
x plus c divided by x plus c is equal to 1. And notice that x plus c does not equal 0. x plus y cancels out and y plus z cancels out. Is that a surprise? Okay, let's see what we get from here. We get t plus y plus, and you're like, why? Well, because it's y, everything cancels out, right? z and then x is equal to x plus y plus z. Wow, that's amazing, right? So what is t equal to? And what was t? Well, t was, let's write down what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract this from x plus y plus z. So y plus z plus x is the same thing as x plus y plus z. Therefore, when you subtract, you're going to be getting 0, which means that t is equal to 0. But what is t? t is x squared over y plus z plus y squared over x plus z plus z squared over x plus y. And that's what, that's what we were trying to find. And apparently, it is equal to 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment and like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video tomorrow at the same time. Until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.